Knowledge is power, and this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731 1230. That's 731 1230 or toll free. Toll free. 1 866 820 that's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's fire up the news hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. Hello, happy Tuesday, everybody. I'm Jennifer Solis, and to my right is Kurt Dukoch, Perry Haichu. We have Keith Patton in the studio. Behind the board is Lawrence. He always makes us sound good. And our producer, Beach. All right, you guys, we have to preface this conversation with a little disclaimer. Yeah, the, the views and opinions on today's show are those of the guests and the hosts and not that necessarily of We Can. All right, guys, we have some breaking news from inside the Senate. Yeah, inside the Senate. Uh, as, if any of you follow the news or social media, there's been a lot of lot of news today of a Senate bill that was introduced that would ease the prohibition of medical marijuana. Well, we have it on good authority that medical marijuana will be announced as a Schedule Two drug very shortly. Woohoo! Yes, that's fantastic news. This is this is just uh, unbelievably huge. If it really turns out to be true that the feds really have rescheduled it. Um, I mean, I would imagine people like you have been waiting literally decades to hear my whole life to hear yeah. news. Yeah, literally your whole life. I mean, I can't imagine what this really means to a whole generation of people. I mean, when it really sets in, I think we'll start to see some of the ramifications almost immediately. Uh, yeah, you might want to call your stockbroker. I would imagine there's going to be a lot of hype surrounding some of these pre-existing cannabis stocks. Uh, That's just true for that. And not only that, um, how do I put this? Um, I mean, uh, gee, uh, my head is just spinning thinking about all the possibilities, all the, the interstate, the game, yeah, you know. interstate commerce potential, yep. uh, possibly reciprocal jail sentences uh, commuted eventually because of this. You know, who knows what this could do? Yeah, I mean, it could tear down a whole way of thinking and build up what more more about what we believe in. Um, it's like the Berlin Wall of cannabis falling. <laughs> it, it would be, it would be, and I mean, like this has special ramifications for people in family court, like Keith, man. Yeah. It's Keith. huge. It's huge because one of the biggest things that they ever said about me was that it was still federally illegal, and that's <laughs> one of the things they hung their hats on. So now, next time I go into court, maybe they're not going to treat me as if I'm you know, tr breaking federal law. So we'll see. And it's also going to tear down all these walls, all these states that are trying to get this passed. And there's great people in these states trying to get these laws passed for medical to bring the medicine to the patients. But they still have those those old timers in there. And there's the same complaint every time. But it's still illegal federally. We'll be breaking federal law if we enact these laws. Guess well, what? They I get to tell them you're number one with both <laughs> yeah. fingers. Right. Yeah, oh, exactly. yeah. This is going to, you know, what about the banking? What about, I mean, oh, my God, just. The ramifications <laughs> are just huge on this. And, you know, the we, we got scooped the story that there's somebody that's inside Senate, you know, that they've, they've talked to. And so if this turns out to be not true, I mean, there's going to be a little bit of heartbreak. But, you know, I got that initial adrenaline rush. Yeah. Well, what about the potential medical benefits? Like, oh, my goodness. about the recreational stuff. We're talking about research. medical research. Yes, right. dude. Yeah. We yes. haven't been allowed to research it forever. This Legal is going to... research. Like, this could Boy. open a whole new... New world of pharmaceutical drugs potentially who knows and well and the thing is is that I also got a tip about why this is going to schedule two and it has to do with alcohol mm. you know you know that we were you know harping on IP one and you know the, the, the potential harm in in bringing big alcohol industry into uh, the medical marijuana industry and how basically that um, for so long that they've been lobbying against medical marijuana because they want to protect their product now they they have the IP one you know up in um, up in legislature Carson in Carson City going on right now that went and passed through assembly didn't it 
I'm not sure. I don't think there was a vote taken on it today. Uh, mm-hmm. I think they heard it. It was read. Yeah. But I don't think they voted on it today. That'll happen sometime later in the week. So if and if they don't vote on it, doesn't it, it just immediately go to ballot? Uh, yeah. Yes. If it doesn't get voted on in the legislature, it will go to ballot. But is it? But will it go on as an additional question? Because the uh, one that everybody I, signed, everybody signed something for legalization, uh, and I, the I one they believe, signed for no. legalization basically said didn't say anything about the alcohol industry. Look, I'm not aware of any separation between IP1 and the ballot initiative. From what I am aware of, that is said ballot initiative, and the language for big alcohol is contained within. I could be wrong about that, but that's how I understand it. I was MPP, or excuse me, the Marijuana Policy Project has a Facebook page that I follow, and they post all kinds of news and updates. They're like, look, if they want you to contact their legislators, they make it real easy. Click on the link, and they have the pre-filled uh, form letters. Thank you. The form letter that, you know, you add your name in and then you type in your address and it finds out who your legislators are and it'll like blast them out to all of them. And, uh, well, I mean, what what has me well, sickened here. on this whole thing is that is that basically they've put so much money against cannabis, against cannabis, against cannabis, and now they're like, oh yeah, now we see it's inevitable, so we're just gonna jump on the bandwagon for this. That's kind of what we expected and kind of what we kept pushing, though, right? Is it's it's kind of it is frustrating, but at least bandwagon or not, like it's it's going, it's toppling. So who cares yeah. why they're on at this here, point? Here's the uh, here's the script. Uh, hello, my name is Blank, and I'm from Blank, your town or city. I'm urging. I'm calling to urge assembly member his or her name to work to enact IP1, the initiative petition to tax and regulate marijuana for adults, before this legislature's March 14th deadline. If the legislature doesn't pass IP1, Nevada will have to wait almost two more years to realize tens of millions of tax revenue while wasting taxpayer dollars and law enforcement resources. Okay, well, that's a bull crap because See, the, the thing is, we don't even have medical off the ground, and now they want to jump straight into right. legalization. Look, that's the straight thing from is, the Marijuana Policy Project's page. Yeah, I, I understand what you're quoting there but the thing is is that just like any anything that you're trying to pass you're going to make it sound very attractive guess what we have medical patients and people coming in from california in droves with medical cards that basically could start up this industry let's get it started for the medical patients before we just legalize and if we do just outright legalize why do we have to have why do we have to have big alcohol involved? I don't like that. Yeah. What about the uh, what about that interim legislative council you were a part of? What about all those recommendations that we were going to make to this bill? What about the DUI uh, D- issue? Yeah. What about the workers' rights issue? What about parental rights? What about uh, the gun rights? You know, well, concealed weapons permits. Nobody wants to talk about any of these things, and nobody cares. Right. They well, shove this- those all to the back, and all of a sudden, this IP one is on everyone's lips. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, and it's well, it's not out of nowhere. It's been in the works for years. But, you know, it's just one of those things. Like, it really kind of, it just makes me sick. Well, what tweaks my tail is that I was hearing at a Carson City that we were we were behind this. We were we were all for it as no. we can. And I we're, was like, wait a minute. We are for the recreational legalization of marijuana. We are not for the gift the gift wrapping of this industry to the alcohol lobby who did not help us get this off the ground. You know, and hasn't been fighting things. for it. They've been fighting against it this whole time. Well, we've got uh, we've got Jay Matos up it in Carson City, and he is a lobbyist for the medical marijuana industry. They are putting forth a competing bill for legalization, and that you may have a potential to vote on two different bills: the one that MPP put forth with the alcohol industry involved in, and one where all of the alcohol industry initiative part is taken out of it. That would be fine like you know they want to put an excise tax on medical on recreational marijuana i'm all for it okay i understand i understand that that's going to happen you're going to get that on a local and a state level that's the you know that's the compromise cost of doing business, yeah the basically. cost of doing business thank you but we also want we don't want to overtax the industry similar to how gaming is taxed in illinois to where it's like a 50 percent tax and you really it's a, almost impossible to turn a profit but so we want we don't want to stifle the business owners too much but uh i mean i i mean i just th- this language is just unbelievable like why they had to insert that little clause 
is uh, and is, oh they didn't have to they chose to they so. chose to but the thing is is that that is not what these people that signed the, on that ballot initiative signed for no IP one was in, in inserted afterwards by constitutional lawyers that massaged that law and so it, everybody that signed their name and said I am for uh, taxing and regulating like uh, like alcohol, they didn't say anything about the alcohol industry I was being just pandered say that. to. You know, on this. I had a question for you, and maybe you'll have an answer, or someone sure. will have an answer. Was this language contained in the original document? No. Like, how is this legal then? How is this legal for them to do that if it's such a dramatic change to the industry that we didn't sign up for? That doesn't make any sense. Well, a constitutional lawyer thought that there was enough wiggle room within the law to insert this extra little piece of uh, of language. I didn't know that you were allowed to insert language. You after didn't know you a could wiggle ballot. the law. Well, you can wiggle, but I thought <laughs> yeah. that you know language is is such. You know, you write the language of the petition, you sign on it, and that's how it goes to ballot. I didn't know that you could. Well, considering interpret. the whole thing, the considering yeah. the whole thing was that's put out deal. there as tax and regulate like alcohol how many times did you hear that uh, when right. you were signing oh man that's the name of the campaign is yeah to make tax it similar and regulate like alcohol and then if it's similar then why not use this as a structure to base it, base it off of you know look it's just yeah. i'm just afraid uh, it's going to be another taxi cab authority type play to where they the law says you can get a license and permit in theory but go ahead and try to do it and it's damn near impossible yeah ask I mean, the guys from uber yeah i was just going to say uber couldn't even crack that code you know and uh the alcohol lobby is pretty pretty significant here also so i would imagine that uh they'll get what they want unfortunately so we'll see how it goes uh, all right you guys so we're gonna move on to yeah. talk a little bit about um talk about some nevada legislation up in carson city there is a las vegas woman whose 86 year old father is facing terminal illness and she is testifying in in favor friday for the right to try bill the right to try bill basically makes it easier for her father to obtain medication that could help prolong, prolong his life that does not have FDA approval. So what does this mean for the marijuana industry? A lot. A lot, yeah. A lot. Gives people choice. It gives a pe people choice. Uh, it's Assembly Bill 164. It's going to make easy. It make it easier for those people that... Um, that have life-threatening illnesses to seek potential remedies that are not received final approval from the Federal Drug Administration, the FDA. Um, so could um, marijuana, hemp, and CBD treatments fall under this law? Absolutely. Absolutely they can. Um, and she, a quote from her says, she said, my father loves life and he wants to live. The bill is sponsored by Assemblyman James Orenshaw, a Democrat of Las Vegas, and it was heard um, by the Assembly Health and Human Services Committee. And it didn't take immediate action on the measure, uh, but no one spoke in opposition to the bill. Like, mm -hmm. how much of a jerk would you look at and look like if you spoke in opposition to that one, huh? Right. Okay. All right. There's a couple of other bills. I got a, I got a right. list of potential bills here. Uh, there's a couple of bills that are going to decrease transparency, unfortunately. Like uh, Senate Bill 57 is all about inmate information. It would allow the Department of Corrections to keep all information confidential that pertains to an offender. You know, they already keep most of that stuff public, but the bill would diminish even that. So, like, if you have a friend that went to jail and you wanted to search for them or try to bail them out, you would no longer be able to access that basic information to see, like, when they were coming up for court or something like that. It would just kind of increase the... Uh, difficulty of the process so i definitely would not support that uh let's see here we had medical a marijuana okay yeah this is bs there's no bill proposed yet to fix the interpretation of nevada law that allows applicants for medical marijuana business licenses to remain confidential the legislature definitely needs to address that oversight but i believe that someone has been talking about introducing a bill to deal with that but i don't know whether it's actually been introduced yet to uh to do you know the public wants transparency definitely and you know ho ho hopefully they'll uh they'll hear he'll hear the people on that so. Well, at a Las Vegas City Council meeting on uh, March 4th, there was a uh, special use permit hearing for Acres Medical LLC. The owner is at uh, 2320 Western Avenue. Isn't that near somewhere like near Chautauqua's like, distribution on Western? 
Probably, I would imagine so. I think that there are a couple of businesses that are right in there. There's that a whole are bunch of medical places. marijuana. I, I have the same. I have a different sheet, but on the same line as you. And there's like four or five of these that I think they voted on, or at least tabled possibly these special use permits. They're all in the same area: Highland Drive, High, yeah, twenty six zero one Highland Drive. This one over here is a twenty seven fifty right down the street, and they're at your Tarkinians district twenty nine zero eight. Yeah, see, so uh, I, it seems like they're tabling. All of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they're asking. Uh, they're also at people are asking for waivers to allow another um, use, which is not a medical marijuana facility, under the same roof as medical marijuana facilities. Okay. Yeah, I'm just you know all of these discussions that are being tabled and uh, and reintroduced by the city council. Well, you got people are running. I, I don't want to put it this way, but you know it's election season. Uh, people are running campaigns right now. A lot of, you know, the mayor is running a campaign. Stavros Anthony is running a campaign. Uh, Lois Tarkanian is running a campaign. You know, Ricky Barlow, Bob Coffin, you know, all of them are all up. So it's easy for them. And I think table. the election's in April. Table it. Yeah, they're table just like, just table, table it up. It. You know, we'll deal with this later. Yeah, and, and we don't want to make any unpopular decisions. I don't want to make That's any decisions sure. right now. It was politically sensitive. You know? All right, well, let's talk a little bit about... Oh, uh, well, I got Kurt. some news out of Pahrump. Uh, uh, okay. Another house busted out in Pahrump. The five are arrested in alleged pot selling house near the high school. So this is a family out there uh, that was just right around the corner from the high school. Mm -hmm. And her two sons, one of them was a 17 year old juvenile, were taken into custody. Um, the uh, And the search warrant was carried out by Nye County Sheriff's uh, for drugs and drug paraphernalia. Uh, they discovered over 600 grams of marijuana and once again, two grams of methamphetamine in addition to needles and marijuana pipe during nice. their search. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm. yeah, they, they, it together. they had their, they had their kid bringing his friends from high school over and selling to the kids from high school. Oh man. Oh man. That's bad. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you guys, there's somebody else in jail that you guys might know. I'm not really sure if you guys know him. Um, Adam Kraska. Um, Adam Kraska is in jail for uh, selling GBH and not only that, having over the limit for his plants, having over the limit uh, for his medicine and selling his medicine. And he's he's got court tomorrow. So if anybody wants to look him up on the uh, Clark County courts and, and go down in support for him, I think he is uh, being heard at like 11 a.m. tomorrow morning. So mm -hmm. if anybody knows him and wants to go support him, you know, no you're doubt. welcome to go support him. All right. Next, we're going to have more news um, and Keith's story after our 420 moment and the break. Do you need help getting your Nevada medical marijuana card? Dr. Reefer is now accepting new patients. There are no medical records required we have of doctor on staff to give you a thorough physical examination. There is a 99% approval rate for patients. They also have a money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Free consultation is available. Call 702-428-0000. 702-428-0000. To get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. Green Spot Hydroponics is a Las Vegas-based distributor of specialty indoor and outdoor gardening supplies. Locally owned and operated with over 3,000 square feet of inventory. Expert and friendly staff to help you with all your growing and hydroponic needs. Our pricing and service will not be beat. We help you grow. 3355 Westlake Mead Boulevard, just behind the Texas station. Mention we can and receive 10% off. Call us at 702-463-6000. That's 702-463-6000. Are you going to be in town this 420 weekend? Join Weekend and Las Vegas Normal for the 420 Freedom Festival. We officially celebrate this worldwide cultural event on Sunday, April 19th with a countdown to 420, New Year's Eve style, and a 420 midnight roast. We will crown Miss 420 Las Vegas 2015. Join us all for a fun-filled day of artists, exhibitors, entertainment, patient resources, speakers, and more at the Las Vegas Concert Saloon. Live music by Mokeshaw, The Signals, Lady Rako and the Sin City Prophets, Sensi, Bloodshot Bandits, New Age Tribe, and the Bourbon Brothers. The Las Vegas Concert Saloon is located at 425 Fremont Street in downtown Las Vegas. Tickets are only $20 and available at Dr. Reefer's offices. For sponsorships and booth availability, contact Las Vegas Normal at lasvegasnormal702 at gmail.com or we can at Kurt, K-U-R-T, at wecan702.org. 
<laughs> oh, welcome back. That sound indicates it's time for our 420 moment. But before we go into that, I would like to say we're going to give away a pair of Freedom Fest tickets to the first caller at 702-731-1230. Again, that's 702-731-1230. So today in our 420 spotlight, we have Marvin Washington. Marvin Washington was born October 22nd, 1965. He's a former defensive end in the National Football League who played from 1989 to 1999. Played for the New York Jets, the San Francisco 49ers, and the Denver Broncos. Uh, he comes out and says uh, the NFL needs to rethink marijuana. Well, it goes definitely uh, further than that, man. The dude is definitely a huge advocate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the NFL, uh, he came out and said uh, the NFL is the... Uh, preeminent league and sports league in the U.S., but is woefully behind the curve when it comes to marijuana, and the players are suffering as a result. Many former and current NFL players use or have used marijuana to treat pain associated with injuries sustained on the field. There is compelling body of re research showing that marijuana can help treat, treat pa pain and brain injuries. Roughly a year ago, Commissioner mm -hmm. Goodell expressed a willingness to consider the medical use of marijuana for players if its medical experts deem it a legitimate option he said and now well, that uh, the feds have deemed it a legitimate medical option <laughs> or, could, or could potentially, yeah, potentially yeah. Yes. Have. so um he said comes out further to say the nfl should abandon its policy of drug testing and punishing players for the use of marijuana the national hockey league does not include marijuana among its banned substances and just this month the ncaa announced that its plans to re-examine the approach to drug testing student athletes for non-performance enhancing drugs like marijuana became they do not provide a competitive advantage. You just said that hockey players are allowed to smoke grass? Yes. That's it's not cool. on our banned substance that's, list. That's pretty nice. sweet. All right. Mm -hmm. so. All right, you guys. We have a winner, and his uh, name is Kurt, ironically. Not the Kurt that's sitting <laughs> next to me. But hey, Kurt. How you doing, Jim? Nice. Very well. Congratulations. Hey, congratulations. You're going to Freedom Fest. Well, great. It sounds good fun. Yeah, it's going to be a blast. We got the whole upper floor of the Las Vegas Country Saloon down there on Fremont Street and the Brass Lounge. We got some great bands, including local band Mokeshaw, the, the Signals, Woo Lady Rako is going to be there, Bloodshot Bandits, the Bourbon Brothers, Sensei, New Age Tribe. We got a great lineup, so it's no going to be a whole lot of fun. It's, it's going to be awesome. a lot of fun. Thank you so, so much for tuning in and listening. Yeah, thank you, Kurt. You're welcome. Thank All you. Right. Bye bye. All right, uh, let's talk about Keith Patton again. You know what? You are the only person that we've had on the show this like, many times. This many times. Uh, nice. And, it, and it's partially it. because every time you come on the show, I end up crying and going, oh, God. <laughs> so you like the emotional torment. And it's like I get to share it with you. Yeah, kind of. it's kind of like being punched in the gut in a good way. Right. I like it because it hurts. <laughs> I like it because yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but you're you were scheduled to have a uh, hearing in family court today this morning. Yeah, at this, 10 a.m. and uh, at Friday at 4 p.m. They the judge the judging department T took herself off. She reclused herself uh, because of a conversation that we had had before uh, her election during her campaign. Um, I kind of expected it. Um, I just expected it to happen earlier. And so that we would have time now, yeah. it, we, we currently are in Department I with Cheryl Moss. We don't know much about her, so I want to stay very positive about it. And we're, we don't have a court date right now. So we were all ready to, you know, have some sort of we've put paperwork in and we thought that we would be progressing forward. And now we really don't have a date. So we don't know any no, nothing changes and everything is just. Stagnant. on hold yeah um so do they have a time limit in which they need to give you another court date i'm not aware i mean they, it could be my estimation is that it's going to be two months away before i get back into court you know and in that time we're just going to continue seeing the counselor that i see every week uh doing the every other visit every other weekend visits with aiden um and having him every wednesday and hoping that uh, it just shines positive in our direction when they see what we've done consistently. Sure. sure. Yeah, I, I know I've seen you guys out at First Friday with the family tribe all having fun. Yeah, we do it when we can. Uh, yeah. Hiking and whatever outdoor activities. And it's when we get together, it's six of us. <laughs> it's a mess. Yeah, yeah, in a good way. So yeah, you guys be, um, be on the lookout on our Facebook page and on uh, our meetup. 
for the next court date so that you can come out and support this family, please. And we just hope this judge, uh, Cheryl Moss, is, has, under, has an understanding, especially with this new Schedule 2 thing. Um, if that passes, then she hope, will hopefully look at it as not a federally illegal substance and won't hold that against me. Another, but we're going to have to uh, deal with the whole driving thing because, as we know, I'm still ordered to never, ever drive my son. So not by this judge, but by the previous judge. So I don't know if this judge is going to uphold that or if she's going to relook at it. But that's the more you guys, uh, the more work that's done in legislation uh, that affects that, that affects me directly. Mm -hmm. The second that law changes, I can petition that the law is changed and there's no reason to hold that against me. Right. Okay. All right. <laughs> cool. No doubt, man. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. I appreciate everything you guys have done and for being here. All right. Thank you, Keith. See, once again, he's jerked the cheer tears out of me. <laughs> so, Perry, you're going to have to, go you're going to have to go with news from Washington. It's all good. <laughs> I have a, I have an awesome story that I want to share about a city-owned marijuana shop opening in a small Columbia River Gorge town. The second I read this, it just blew my mind, and I really feel like this could be a model for a lot of small towns who are looking to fill their coffers and keep things close. Uh, it's called North Bonneville, Washington. is a little town, and it's known for like cool windsurfing and uh, stuff like that. But uh, how do I put this? They've decided to open a cannabis, a recreational cannabis store that's owned by the city. I think it's really cool. And they're definitely the first uh, city to attempt this. Really small little town, rural city, about a thousand people live there. And uh, they're calling the place the Cannabis Corner. And the Washington right State Liquor Control Board spokesman, Brian Smith, says no city has even attempted in Washington to do this before. They are by far the first. And uh, maybe we can be the second here in Las Vegas. Fill the gorge. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I don't know if Vegas will jump on that. You know, like, it I seems like our city leaders are so hesitant. If you know? Mayor Goodman gets reelected, you know that she was the one that, that kept saying, oh, this needs to be a nonprofit. This needs to be that. Maybe we can go with her to this with this idea. Hey, Mayor Goodman. or you It's know? a great idea. North Las Vegas could do it. You know, all oh, any, yeah. any, any city that's in rough financial times could benefit from the potential windfall of having a city-owned store you could set your own prices your own staff etc life is good just an idea though let's see how oh, this well, plays like out like on public access you could even get on public access well, tv well we'll be watching this let's see what happens you know yeah. there's definitely uh, a lot and i got a little bit from from oregon also okay uh, oregon's medical pots future is outlined in eugene former new governor new mexico governor gary johnson is giving a keynote address in eugene oregon on sunday march the 15th uh, oregon is embarking on a historic journey to regulate and tax cannabis sales to adults 21 and over by the end of 2015 uh, while somehow integrating its existing medical marijuana system oh boy the potential winners of the whole process are going to gather on the 15th and 16th uh let's see and they're just trying to how do i put this they're just trying to hash this all out. You know, there's a lot of talk of them canceling, you know, oh, we want to cancel the medical marijuana program or we want to lop this in with the recreational or this or that. And a lot of the industry leaders are kind of gathering to try to, uh, I guess, determine the best course of action before anything is rashly determined. So I definitely would be disappointed if they all came to the conclusion that medical marijuana program was unnecessary because I really believe that the separation of medical and recreational needs to exist, even though recreational oh, yeah. marijuana... Uh, maybe um, forthcoming nationally someday. <laughs> you said hash it out. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> All right, some more news out of Oregon. You know, how potent are your medical marijuana edibles? Oh, man, sometimes too strong. It depends on where I get them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there are um, people that are buying uh, treats called coma treats or treats that are really very, very high in THC or mm -hmm. expected to be high in THC that are not getting their money's worth. Oh. Yeah, I know, huh? Mm -hmm. It's a $20 pizza personal pizza no less that's supposed to have 350 milligrams of thc but the pizza may not deliver on its pro uh, on its promise they this are is... independently testing these products yeah not i know not the ones that are put forth to the lab but just independently ch testing random products and they are not getting the test results Oregon labs are getting wildly inconsistent uh, potency uh, results, leaving patients with no idea what they're actually consuming, oh, yeah. regardless of the labeling. Oh, yeah, that's real. That's lack of state regulation, too. You go to California, and they're like, it's got 300 milligrams of THC. It's like, how do I know that? 
There's no one checking to see if you actually have any THC in it. There's no one stopping you from putting more or less or whatever you want. And so, and, yeah. you know, leading up to that, we have uh, Nevada Lab News. Our advisory committee member, Jason Sturtzman, uh, was on, at the second, of course, the, the second lab advisory committee in which basically um, how much got done? They didn't accomplish a whole lot in the two hours they had. And it was working. not due to the lab advisory committee members. No, it, it wasn't at all. It was, uh, there was far too much public comment and a lot of public comment that was not relevant to what they were what they were discussing at that moment uh what people got to remember when they go to these that they they have a limited time to get things done and when they put a vote to the table and then they open it up to public discussion before they vote they only want public discussion on what they're voting on they don't want to hear about how long this is taking them because you getting up there and saying how long this is taking them is it's just making longer. them take longer because that's not what they're voting on so people need to keep this clear and precise and only speak to things that they know of and that are on the topic and if you speak for 20 minutes about how long this is taking, you're part of the problem, not the solution. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Okay, so next time that there is a meeting, a lab committee meeting, and you would like to discuss these different topics, don't please, please don't act like this is your personal soapbox to go up there and discuss anything that you like. If you would like to discuss anything that you would like, get a radio show on KLAV and <laughs> <laughs> buy your airtime and then discuss anything that you want to discuss. Us, or give us a call and say, I'd like to discuss some of these topics on your show. I'd be good with that. I'd be good with that, too. And also, like, I, I don't know. I, we all want to see these labs get open. I mean, yeah. the patients, the regulators, the legislators, the business owners, the potential employees, uh, we, we all want... You know, let's just let's make lemonade. You know? Yeah, we, we, yeah. We, we, we'll we'll get it done. But when is the next laboratory meeting scheduled? Have they scheduled another one yet? We'll see. This is what the problem was. It went so long that they couldn't even schedule another one because of due they, to open meeting law. They have to be they finished by a certain have to time. be finished by a certain time. Oh so boy. they just ended up withdrawing a motion that was on the table at the very end of the thing and adjourning the meeting because they ran out of time. So they didn't even vote on the second motion. The only the only thing that they got they got accomplished is they decided a chair and a vice chair. And uh, they also decided <laughs> to, that be to done approve in the first meeting. Uh, that would have been done yeah. should have been done in the to first approve meeting. the twenty five B schedule, which is basically all perfectly safe stuff that is like food cinnamon, cinnamon garlic, garlic this and that to be used as as pesticides i mean if you didn't know you could use that then you shouldn't be in this business <laughs> we shouldn't need somebody to tell us that you can use perfectly safe natural things on your plants right right so i got a little news out of utah this is a little fun one okay, okay. Gosh. <laughs> dea warns utah lawmakers that legal pot could lean to lead to stoned rabbit attacks oh uh, okay dude when i heard this i thought this was like an onion, onion. yeah i thought this was it's a not. satirical uh story but it turns out to be actually real please please uh Elaborate. Yeah, well, Utah lawmakers are considering legalizing medical marijuana in their state, which is has the DEA very concerned about the impending threat of stoned bunny rabbits. Senator Mark Madsen recently introduced a bill that would allow patients to legally possess and use medical marijuana. While Madsen is looking out for his constituents, Special Agent Matt Fairbanks is convinced that legalization would only turn the state's cutest mam mammals against them. In a, oh God! In a testimony presented to the Utah Senate panel, Fairbanks shared his harrowing experiences with hairs as part of the state's cannabis eradication team. He says, "Quote: I deal in facts. I deal in science." Said Fairbanks, oh my prefacing God. his argument for the preservation of a drug-free wildlife. Fairbanks said that some illegal marijuana grow sites that he saw rabbits that had cultivated a taste for marijuana. Our one, chickens love it. Yeah. As one of them refused to leave us, and we took all of the marrow, marijuana around him, but his natural instincts to run were somehow gone, said Fairbanks. Despite Fairbanks' concern over fearless stoned rabbits uniting to take over the Great Salt Lake, the Senate committee approved the measure by a three to two vote. You know what? <laughs> You know what's what ironic? 
You know what's ironic about that is they don't they have rabbit roundups in Utah in which they shoot the rabbits because they're they're infringing upon their agricultural uh, or that's Idaho. I, oh my I god. I don't, I don't know but what you know of what's the rabbit's natural instinct <laughs> to eat and mate mate Hang out yeah and be slightly paranoid. <laughs> you know. We're all rabbits then. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I have a couple of stories out of Texas that are kind of curious. Uh, yesterday was Texas Independence Day. Woohoo! Don't mess with Texas. No doubt. And it was fitting that Representative David Simpson used the occasion to file a sweeping bill, which is House Bill 2165, that would end marijuana prohibition in Texas. Uh, let's see here. Do, do, do. A news release from Simpson's office called the proposal a first in the nation. It would end marijuana prohibition, but not substitute a different regulatory scheme. He says he wants to propose that the plant be regulated like tomatoes, jalapenos, or coffee. Woohoo! <laughs> Simpson continued, current marijuana policies are not based on science or sound evidence, but rather misinformation and fear. Right All on. God created is good, including marijuana. God did not make a mistake when he made marijuana that the government needs to fix. Oh, I like this guy. Who is he? He is Texas Representative David Simpson. Let's, he said, let's allow the plant to be utilized for good, helping people with seizures, treating warriors with PTSD, producing fiber and other products, or simply for beauty and enjoyment. Government prohibition should be for violent actions that harm your neighbor, not of the possession, cultivation, and responsible use of plants. See, that's like, that's a Texan right there. And uh, I have one more story from texas i want to get to real quick i've okay. been following this lady for a couple of years now and she's finally starting to get a little bit of press and her name is ann lee and she's a republican grandmother that started a group called republicans against marijuana prohibition or ramp for short right on and uh she's one of the most vocal cannabis advocates in texas right now and of course due to the overly protective nature of the republican party it's kind of taboo to come out as a cannabis supporter. I was chastised within my by my uh, rank and file uh, supervisors, uh, and there, when I was working for the party because I was you know openly a little too openly you know cannabis friendly, and they're like, well, you can't be a Republican if you're a cannabis user, you know. But really, this lady is just saying that it's it's not Republican to be against prohibition. That's not what the party stands for. We're supposed to be about individual liberty and things about you know small business opportunities and things like that. And really, yeah. if they really really believe that, then it's a no brainer for Republicans to get to get behind uh, the repeal of marijuana prohibition. And, Absolutely. And, and, and she does great work, and I just really hope that RAMP gets a lot of press in the not-too-distant future. And, the, you know, and that's awesome. Uh, you know, and the thing is, is that the, about we can, our board members are Democratic. They are Democrats. They're Republicans. They're Libertarians. They are Green Party. Um, we don't care about anything except for patients and cannabis. And it's not a partisan issue. It's, it's a not. it's a it's a know, humanitarian hum, exactly. issue. Exactly. It's a human rights issue, exactly. All right. So we've got some uh, news out of Arizona. Um, Department of Public Safety arrest a man with one point seven million dollars of marijuana outside the Phoenix metro area. Oh. Whoa, that's a lot of cannabis, guys. He <laughs> he was arrested outside the Phoenix uh, metro area after uh, the Arizona Department of Public Safety officer discovered 1,700 pounds of marijuana in his vehicle during a traffic stop on Wednesday. What kind oh. of a vehicle is that? I don't know. <laughs> RV, maybe? <laughs> Man, he had a commercial vehicle, and he was stopped for a traffic violation. The office obtained permission from the driver to search the vehicle. Oh, Why? never do that. Never! Yeah, dude. I got, a couple, I got a couple million dollars in grass. I'm sure you'll miss it. Yeah. So this is, he's a 64-year-old man from uh, Lithonia, Georgia, and he was booked into Maricopa County Jail yes, on was. charges of possession of marijuana for sale and transportation of marijuana for sale. Go directly so, to jail. Do so, not pass go. So he wasn't even from Arizona? He was transporting it from Georgia? Well, it doesn't say whether he was oh. transporting it from Georgia. He says he was from Georgia. Ah. So he could, you know, hey, he could be from anywhere at this point. Hey, you know what? Are you registered to vote? I am. I am. Of course. Are you, Beach? Oh, of course. Absolutely. He's nodding his head. Lawrence, are you? Yeah. All right. He's 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 uh, putting his finger up too, not the middle one. Um, <laughs> 
Registration for the 2015 municipal uh, primary election ends March 17th. Do you know that you have to register way before it's time to vote? If you don't, then get out and do it now. Do you know how many people tell me they go up to vote and they're not registered to vote and they are going up to the polling place to vote? And I'm like, are you registered? No. Well, okay, so well, do you then support change to legislation that allows for same-day registration if you have the proper identification? Uh, I don't know. I think I do. I wouldn't be opposed to it if people had proper ID. It yeah. makes sense that you can... We can do everything online these days in this world. Why can't we have a thing next to the bo- bo- voting booth. Yeah, some states have same-day voting, like uh, Beach was saying. That's what we might want to look into here. Uh, Montana has it, you say? Oh, oh. Minnesota? Minnesota. Minnesota has same-day re- Minnesota. I think it's an like idea. That? I think it's a good idea, like, <laughs> especially for our our specific issue yeah like we have to have same day registration law um i went to a tom petty yeah we we, we went to a, a tom petty show uh with zz top and it was this awesome show at the anaheim call uh, uh auditorium and uh just, great great outdoor set and i'm talking to all these kids and uh they're just like oh uh, we're gonna vote to legalize it this year this is this is the year that was the last time california had their legalization ballot up but uh <laughs> but i'm just like are you guys registered to vote and it was like two weeks before the election and they're just like wait Silence. What, like <laughs> no, none of the 12 of them had any idea what i was talking about and it was just it was it's just terrible so yeah please register to vote um i guess i'm getting signaled that we have to take our second break so we'll have more after the break stick with us The Vaughn Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation, toll free, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Are you going to be in town this 420 weekend? Join Weekend and Las Vegas Normal for the 420 Freedom Festival. We officially celebrate this worldwide cultural event on Sunday, April 19th with a countdown to 420, New Year's Eve style, and a 420 midnight roast. We will crown Miss 420 Las Vegas 2015. Join us all for a fun-filled day of artists, exhibitors, entertainment, patient resources, speakers, and more at the Las Vegas Concert Saloon. Live music by Mokeshaw, The Signals, Lady Rako and the Sin City Prophets, Sensi, Bloodshot Bandits, New Age Tribe, and the Bourbon Brothers. The Las Vegas Concert Saloon is located at 425 Fremont Street in downtown Las Vegas. Tickets are only $20 and available at Dr. Reefer's offices. For sponsorships and booth availability, contact Las Vegas Normal at lasvegasnormal702 at gmail.com or we can at Kurt, K-U-R-T, at wecan702.org. Welcome back, everybody. This is Nevada Cannabis News. I'm Jennifer Solis. I have Kurt Dukach, Perry Haichu. We also have Lawrence behind the board making us sound great. And Beach, he's the one that prods us and tells us move on to the next story. (laughs) (laughs) All right, you guys. so. (laughs) Exactly. Or we would be harping forever on, like, what, IP1, federal legalization, (laughs) and, you know, getting alcohol All the good things in life get one yeah. story a, a week done we would so. get one story a week done um are you having allergy problems at this time i know i am a little bit yeah yep. are you Kurt's i, I, I live with, I live with them all right well 
there is a study saying that marijuana allergies are a real thing. I have had people tell me that they're allergic to marijuana, and I'm like, sucks to be you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Christ have you ever taken a bong rip or a hit off a joint and then gone into like a sneezing fit? A friend of mine used to have sneezing fits when he would break up his nugs. He would get like a bag of weed and, and chop it up with a little set of scissors to, to roll a joint. And almost immediately you could see like his eyes would, his eyes would start to water up and uh, things like that. And, and he, he knew, you know, you, you got to gotta smoke it. But uh, he, he was aware that he had a, a, a mild uh, cannabis allergy, I guess you would call it. I don't know what exactly he was allergic to, but... Well, I, I might be a little allergic to the chlorophyll. I notice a lot of times if it isn't completely cured when I smoke it, I get a real tickle in my nose and it just like I, I have to fight back the sneezing. So yeah, beach held up a sign. Maybe it's some of the mold that's contained within some of these plants that's causing some of these allergic reactions with people. And that could be true, which is why it is so important to have these labs open and operating so we can get these meds tested and make sure that there isn't anything like that in there. Well, cannabis sativa is an, an annual deciduous amophilarous flowering plant that belongs to the cannabicinae family and it's a native to central and south asia and it has pollen that is typically 23 to 28 micro millimeters in diameter and it basically is you know spherical in shape and it shed during the late summer to early autumn cannabis pollen we like and we smoke and we oh, call yes. it keef so that is the keef that's on the plant. But there are people that actually have allergies to cannabis plants. And in saying that cannabis sativa contains more than 400 compounds, including more than 60 cannabinoids, delta 9 uh, tetrahydrocannabinol um, is particular of interest to us because it's a primary psychoactive component in cannabis. But a lot of people are allergic to the pollen itself. Um, and they'll have slight allergic like symptoms and so during this allergy season you know protect yourself smoke your keef don't snort it just saying <laughs> <laughs> indeed so. i got i got a story coming out of montana here uh there's a montana students alter a sign to say smoke weed every day what? Uh, there is a clever crew of stoners from the University of Montana that recently punked the school's campus security by rewiring a digital traffic sign to, to deliver a blunt message saying, smoke weed every day. That's funny. Well, the rewired sign only lasted 10 to 15 minutes before the haters, <laughs> before the haters changed the message. The ruse was a welcome one, especially in a state like Montana, where marijuana is basically a myth. Ugh. He said, and best of all, many campus visitors driving through the campus grounds, ranging from potential applicants to student parents, definitely saw this sign. For prospective students visiting the camp campus, this sign made them think highly of the school. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, two chains. Two chains is in the news again. Is he debating Nancy again? Oh, God. I hate that woman. <laughs> two chains smoked an $800 ounce out of gold papers oh the 24k papers yeah and 800 okay continue okay so he's back in the weed spotlight once again why not uh planning busy planning his mayoral candidacy rapper two chains uh films a show with gq entitled the most expensive can i say oh the most expensive you know sh shiznit you know, shiznit um, Did you just pump the brakes? Did you just say he's planning a mayoral run? Yes, yes, in <laughs> California. Mayor, Mayor Two Chains, okay. Mayor Two Chains. I would vote for him if I <laughs> was in California. I'm sure plenty of people will. I'd like <laughs> to mean, hear. Man. I'd love to hear all about his economic recovery plan for the disenfranchised parts of his city. Yo, <laughs> yo, <laughs> I know. As you expect, the fish show features Two Chains touching and sometimes consuming very expensive stuff. Um, <laughs> Isn't it? For the debut episode of season two, Two Chain sampled the most expensive weed things in the world, or at least in California, <laughs> which contains 24 karat gold shine papers. Chain's ass, does it come with weed? It's, it's like, uh, <laughs> like 
foodie porn for weed connoisseurs or something. You get to try all this exotic, flavorful, cool stuff. I'm kind of jealous. You know, I, I kind of caught a little bit of it, and I, 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 I uh, an interview of him talking about it. And he says the most expensive weed is not necessarily the best. There it is, there, people. <laughs> there it is, there. Oh, you know, there's no doubt about that. When I worked, uh, when I was volunteering at a uh, local dispensary here back in the good old days. Um, my boss sometimes would tell me about how people want to pay more for their cannabis because they feel like they're getting the really good stuff. Like if you have a bag of really, really dank meds and you price it too low, some people will be turned off. Like it's, I know it sounds ridiculous. No, it doesn't. But no, it doesn't. Like you have the people that are smart that are like, oh, that's the good stuff. I'll take all, you know, I'll take all of it. But some people like that don't really know want to pay the top shelf price for that OG Skywalker Lamborghini private reserve yeah. freaking whatever you call it. Yeah, and that's and that's exactly why um that's exactly why people that have car accessories that are priced like, you know, that lay, that are have big names on them will pay $800 for a car, you know, a car slip cover or something in, insane. It's because Branding. they can. Branding is everything. Because they can, number one. Number two, branding. If it sounds good, we'll buy it. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, that $10,000 iPhone um, watch. The gold watch? The gold one? Uh, you know you know, people are going to be buying that just because they can. There's people who spend more than that on a regular watch, so. No doubt. So. All right. In the nation's capital, Washington. Uh, yeah, Washington, D.C. Yeah, Washington, D.C. Council bans private cannabis clubs. Uh, that's disappointing. Okay. Boo. They were so like, rah, 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 like, we're going to stand up to the government and, you know, fight for this legalization. And now they're like, oh, well, you know, that battle's over. Let's let's turn back the clock a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, the council uh, voted today to pass legislation submitted by Mayor Browser that means that bans businesses, cannabis clubs, and other associations from permitting the private consumption of marijuana. District district Damn. residents didn't vote last November to bankrupt and incarcerate the owners of businesses where cannabis is consumed, some, said Adam Ed, Edinger, who chairs the D.C. Cannabis Campaign and formally pr proposed Initiative 71. The D.C. Council has blurred the clear line drawn by 71 between public and private con consumption. Oh. I got a, I've got a little blurb out of Washington. Um, Washington, D.C., the cops in America's capital will now give back your weed to pot smokers. In uh. the nation's capital, where the weed law went into effect uh, like days ago, it's now liberated district stoners and they're already weep reaping the benefits. There is a story that is going viral about a man that walked, moonwalked, into the 6th District Police Station and casually told the officers, you have my marijuana, you have my weed, give it back. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they did. <laughs> okay. So DC's new law legitimately allows consumers to get back their seized weed from the cops. Right in, uh, right in Obama's backyard, cops are literally giving weed back to the people. Woohoo! Woohoo! Wow. So. All right, well, yeah. One day at a time, one battle at a time. It's uh, fun, fun times. I mean, when you can get your marijuana back from a cop. I mean, like I said, that's always if you a good day. Told me five years ago that we'd be where we are. I'd have laughed at you, but here we are. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just unbelievable the progress that's being made. Yep. So we got a couple announcements to make because our show's almost over here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this Saturday we have our our uh, patients. Patients monthly meeting together we can um, and yeah together we can at the second Saturday here at uh, Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf on Maryland Parkway at two p.m. to four p.m. So come on down and, and ask the questions you want to know. It's across from UNLV's Student Union. Um, if you'd like to find out more about our organization, um, you can come to this meeting, or. If you have a cannabis card and you'd like to find out how to cook your medicine, we have a cannabis cuisine course on Sunday, March 15th from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. It's our it's at our garden house that's off of Desert Inn near Torrey Pines. The cost is $35 for this class and you need to provide your own medication. and Or you can have the medication donated to you by other people uh, there. We don't provide the medication, we just provide the knowledge. 
Hey, we We've have got the Freedom. Four, yeah, the 420 Freedom Festival coming up on the 19th, Sunday the 19th at the top floor, Las Vegas Country Saloon. Entrance is $20 or $25 at the door. It will be a blast. Got, got to show up to this one. Don't yeah. miss it. And so that is on Sunday, April 19th, the mm -hmm. day before 420. All right, guys. All right. Be well, safe out there, and we'll see you next Thursday on the radio. Next Tuesday. Oh, I don't even Star. know what I'm talking about anymore. <laughs>